Okay, so hello again. So this is Huan Sun from Keris, and um, we have finished the, er, the first half of our conference on the ASEAN Cyber University project with the topic of leapfrogging the challenges of higher education during COVID-19. So um, the earlier we had before our break, just to give you a brief recap, the three presentations were um, very focused on the government level perspective. So uh, different kinds of example initiatives that the government um, planned, developed and rolled out, which included not only operating different MOOC platforms, but also different um, kinds of support such as, for example, a uh, network, uh, a regional hub stretched out across the country or different kinds of support networks in terms of sharing um, sharing or exchanging resources and insights. So, and so this time, the next two presentations, I think uh, we have a very more um, personal perspective. So we will be now uh, hearing uh, some examples from the instructor and the uh, and a learner, the natural learner herself. So I now have the pleasure of introducing you. Hold on. So, sorry. So I now have the uh, pleasure of introducing you, Professor Nguyen Pihong Jiang from the Hanoi University of Science and Technology, Vietnam. So just for a brief background, um, so Professor Jiang has been one, um, one very long and very close uh, partner of the ASEAN Cyber University project. So you will be able to um, hear from her perspective. So, uh, the actual uh, case study on using the OER platform, which is actually currently being operated by the ASEAN Cyber University Project Secretariat. So without further ado, let me, uh, in, let me welcome you to Professor Nguyen Bihong Jiang from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. Please, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank you very much. A special thank to ASA Cyber University project for giving me a chance to say our experience of online teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology during COVID-19. And as you know, higher education institution encounter difficulties when the COVID-19 pandemic happens because the learner cannot go to class and absorb knowledge directly. In Vietnam, university have used online learning to help learners keep learning in this pandemic context. However, students and teaching staff have expressed concern about the quality of the learning process. And my presentation will introduce experience of teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology and a case study of using Addison Cyber University Open Educational Resource Pilot Class in teaching subject introductional to e-learning during COVID-19 context. And my presentation includes five parts how Vietnam education faced to COVID-19, and the second is digital transformation at Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And the third is online learning and teaching at Hanoi University of Science and Technology during COVID-19. And the fourth is a case study of using ISO from Cyber University Open Educational Resource for Teaching during COVID-19. And we hope this experience in online teaching and learning, especially using ICR OER Pilot Class for teaching during COVID-19, will be a topical lesson 
for supporting the higher education system during the COVID-19 crisis. And we also hope to get response from Asian experts to discuss about our lessons. As you know, this is the advantage of a country uh, have a large proportion of people owning and using technology. Vietnam is in the top 20 countries with the highest number of internet users. And there are 49 million people connected to the internet. And there is 55% of Vietnamese people owning smartphones and 46% owning personal computers. So Vietnam is considered a bright spot for students to easily access technology in education. And in Vietnam, during the complicated COVID-19 epidemic, there were nearly 80% of students studying online and ranking the 17th among 200 countries and territories in the world. And the COVID-19 pandemic had a strong impact on teaching process, creating a literal trend of physical transformation in teaching and learning process. So, Hanoi University of Shen and Technology considers digital transformation as one of the breakthrough solutions for fundamental innovation and international integration. And you can see that the digital transformation has quickly become a top priority for host. And as well as the digital transformation in training management, the digital transformation in teaching and scientific research activity is also highly valued by Hanover University of China and technology. And, and in, that, in order to build the digital university model, Hanover University of China and technology has been equipped with the following facilities, infrastructure, uh, application of information and communication technology, such as multimedia classroom system, system of computer rooms, lab and workshop, traditional libraries with library management software systems, photo or email system of the school, student management software system, electronic training portal, training management software system, school wireless international internet access system, computer-based test assessment system, electronic library, digital learning materials, and basic software. And and now you can see who has simultaneous deploy the hardware system and software system to develop teaching programs to meet many different teaching conditions and requirements of, of students. And the context of the COVID-19 pandemic has provided a part of Vietnamese higher education in 2021. Facing restriction on contact caused by the pandemic, Schools are only using the convenience of information technology and telecommunication to deploy online learning and defense. And you can see at first, this process has some advantages. Firstly, the active effectiveness of Asian Cyber University projects since 2009, and we know the as the ICN Cyber University process has provided technical support and training to improve the production capacity of electronic <coughs> lectures in the form of e-learning training, technology transfer, and annual basic 
and not functioning cost. It can be said that the Asian Cyber University project has contributed to promoting the application of e-learning in Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And then, as a result of the Asian Cyber University project, we deploy the project innovating teaching and learning methods by applying teaching technology according to blended learning. And then, uh, we have another advantage for deploying online learning and teaching at host during COVID-19 is the host administration policy. And you can see now we have uh, within the digital university and do the project innovating teaching and learning methods by blind, blended learning. And blended learning is a method of conveying content knowledge to learners by a combination of face to face teaching in the classroom and a digital learning environment. And the goal of blended teaching is to improve the quality and effectiveness of learners through the flexibility and the convenience of online teaching, while maintaining the advantages of traditional teaching in the classroom. And blended learning is a flexible teaching and learning method that combines the technological, technological advancement of online learning with the interaction and participation of traditional learning. And with the support of implementing ICU project DFAR and host administration policies, online class have a part in the process of knowledge transmission, connecting teachers with learners in online learning activity at Hanover University of Science and Technology during COVID-19. And this is a type of synchronous online class by Microsoft Teams that allows students and teachers are available in class at the same time. But in COVID-19 pandemic context, who organize another online classes via blended class via Microsoft Team and online class in model learning management system. Especially, uh, we uh, when uh, at the end of the semester course, we must make the online examination for evaluation of the online learning process, and we use Moodle with set exam also to help teacher make the quiz, check the student authentication, and help the student can take the online exam easily. And now, um, uh, when COVID-19 um, happens, um, we use the ICU OER pilot class to make the blended class between the ICU OER LMS content and the And the online class on Microsoft Teams, and you know, also when using online, it's inside the university, open educational ROS, LMS, now we can um, organize the blended class it's easily, and the student can access her own content in the class at the LMS of the ICU OER and when we have the synchronous class we can use Microsoft Teams to have a uh, interact with students and teacher and when we use Science Cyber University 
और ये आप वाला क्लास वी मस्ट है University of Yapalas class. And first, when uh, I saw Cyber University project called for uh, ICOMS pilot class, first they should apply the proposal template. And then, if the ICO project give a notification and request for confirmation, for confirmation Costing should confirm and give additional information. And then the first step is I see a project will set up the LMS file for the pilot class. And then the costing must supply Google Mail account of the costing and student in the class. And when the costing setting up is complete, we must ask students to subscribe to the ICO OER as login in the ICO OER platform. And so, the student and the course team can log in and have a first look at the pilot class on ICO OER LMS. <coughs> and in the preparation phase for ICO OER pilot class, the costing can view the cost online in studio mode. It is very easy for costing can check the cost online. And next, the costing can view the cost online for updating the cost content if it needed. And, in, uh, and for updating the cost content, we can add subsection for adding a new unit, such as discussion, text, problem, or video. And the discussion can be added for the cost in ICO OER on the class that students can teacher can communicate when online class deployed. And it can supply more text material for students in the ICO or the other class in the studio mode. And now you can see there are many types of questions. We can add from problems in the course. And also we can add more video in the course in studio mode. And the updating the course content in ICO OER is very e easily. And in the studio mode, the costing also can set the cost info such as schedule and details, wedding, costing, group configuration, advanced setting, and certificates for the cost. And after we finish uh, the preparation phase for the ICO OER pilot class, uh, teacher and student can uh, use the pilot class for teaching and learning online. And you can see when we use uh, the ICO of the pilot class, costing um, and view the cost content in label with view mode. And can post discussion to engage the student in online class in view label mode also. Especially, the costing also can view the materials of the cost in view little more. And 
thấy uh, when the costume want to view the costume for they can go to the instructor instructor that's more in view live with more to see many information about the cost when implementing the ICO year pilot plus the costing can be the student admin at instructor that's more in view legal mode to view great book for own and grown student and view progress map for specific student and here the great book for and grown student in my class is addressing to uh, in e-learning and we can see all of the um, grade for each homework when students finish this and also the costing can view the student admin of view progress by with the specific students. And next, uh, we can see that in the studio of the course, in the studio mode of the course, we also can download data about students who have identified cases or provide information about the student. And when we use ASEAN Cyber University Open Educational Research Pilot Class, uh, we have uh, uh, the chance to make a flexible and a synchronous online class for teachers, create and update the course contents as well as students access the learning content easily. And in COVID-19 uh, happened, and when COVID-19 happened, um, so students can go to the class directly. So we use Microsoft Teams Face Class for organize the synchronous lectures. So teacher and student can interact effectively. So you can see we must the IC OER pilot class with Microsoft Teams based class. Uh, or have a blended class and the blended class of ICU or Yapalus class and Microsoft Team based class ensure the quality and the effectiveness of learning and teaching process during COVID-19. And I think um, the ICU or Yapalus class have a, a many costs uh, to choose the content to help students now to access during the access learning content during the COVID-19. So we would like to thanks to ASEAN Cyber University project for give us a chance in making online learning class to help students and teachers cope to the COVID-19 pandemic. And we hope uh, our pilot class using Asian Cyber University Open Educational Research LMS is an effective online class during COVID-19. And that's all of my experience in online learning during COVID-19 at Hanoi University of Science and Technology. And we well, would like to say thank you very much for listening. So thank you again. Thank you very much, Professor Nguyen Pi Hong Jiang from Hanoi University of Science and Technology. So again, uh, just to briefly recap, so uh, we were able to see and witness um, the openness of Professor Jiang's university, which actually encouraged um, instruct different uh, professors to actively engage in innovating teaching and learning methods through blended learning. And I think this openness of the university level 
was uh, definitely one of the key factors that uh, encouraged and allowed uh, Professor Jia to try out different using different platforms, which included, fortunately, the ACU LMS platform. And so uh, we were also able to see a very comprehensive overview of our ACU LMS platform and also uh, witnessing uh, how Professor Jiang uh, created her online hybrid learning environment by integrating not only the LMS platform, but also the uh, asynchronous and synchronous platforms in order to um, complement each uh, points. So thank you again, Dr. Jiang. And our um, last but not least, uh, which I am very looking forward to. So our next presentation will be shared by an actual um, student level perspective. And um, just to briefly introduce you. So um, the ACU project secretariat is currently, uh, has teamed up with a cyber university in Korea and is jointly uh, providing a um, online blended learning program in Korean language and uh, Miss Esther Abigail Harris uh, from the University of the Philippines Open University is a participant of this uh, online Korean program which has lasted for the past four months and I think uh, she will be sharing with us this afternoon um, her perspective on not only uh, in this program, but in uh, on distance education in general, on her, on her insights and her opinions. So uh, again, please kindly welcome Miss Esther Abigail Paris from the Philippines. Please, the floor is yours. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It is an honor for me to speak in this conference. I would like to share the academic situation under COVID-19 through a student's perspective. During face-to-face -face classes, a high five or a hug from a friend would welcome you as soon as I step my foot on a crowd team. Oh, sorry. Okay. A handshake from a teacher would congratulate me whenever I leave. I thrive on academic tasks, but a glare from a teacher would terrify me if I was caught using my smartphone during class hours. If you would ask me what school is like, I will instantly picture in my mind an institution packed with learners crowding a classroom, a hallway, or the school's cafeteria. As someone who's used to the face-to-face -face mode of education, I always associate academic settings with students. In fact, just the sight of an institution crowded with students uh, already motivated. Ms. Paris, I'm very sorry to interrupt. Uh, would yeah. you kindly reset your presentation to a regular slide mode? Oh, I'm sorry about that. No problem. Um, if you could um, end your slideshow and restart it, and then if you okay, much perfect. Thank you very much. I'm sorry for the interruption. <laughs> I'm sorry. Oh, should I um start my presentation? No, I think or? you can just uh continue from where we left. Okay. Okay. However, the threat brought about by the COVID-19 transitioned the academic settings from buildings and classrooms to virtual spaces. What should alarm us is that while social interactions are beneficial to one's mental health, as reported by the Economic and Research Council in 2013, social isolation, on the other hand, triggers mental health. If I were to compare the education during pre-pandemic and under the COVID-19 situation, we could assume, or I could assume, that there is only a minimal difference. Though the academic settings differ, the number of tasks given, the number of hours spent on studying are the same. However, in addition to the difference in academic settings, what we, students, lost are camaraderie, a sense of community, and genuine affirmation. No longer do we face a whiteboard or a blackboard while eagerly waiting for the school bell to ring, or we can life out of us and be excited for the next class. No longer do we receive a gentle pat in the back when, from a classmate 
or a friend with an academic life that's tough. No longer the experience celebrating with our friends when examination week has passed. It seems like a virtual classroom has robbed students of social interaction. Online learning, as an online learner, I couldn't agree more that the social isolation impacts my mental health. Having limited interactions with friends and classmates makes me feel disconnected from the society. Okay, another personal challenge I've encountered as an online learner is to concentrate and stay attentive in lessons for a long period of time while facing a laptop or a smartphone. When classes are still held in schools and classrooms, the use of any devices is strictly prohibited. I have no way of checking social media updates while, while the teacher is inside the classroom. Because just a single glare from the teacher would make me feel nervous. For worse situations, my phone would be confiscated until my parents would be until my parents would personally acquire my phone from my teacher. Well, today, ironically, that prohibited devices during class hours are the, are the necessary ones to continue my education. However, if it was difficult to stay attentive during face-to-face -face classes, how much more is it today when devices are right in front of us and the social media platforms are within our reach? My stimuli to scroll through my social media platform would be more difficult to refuse when a message or a notification pops out. It requires a strong will to keep yourself attentive despite the temptations being right in front of you. Well, on the other, on the other hand, if we would look at the other side, I could say that the mode of education and the academic settings under the COVID-19 instills discipline. It pushed me to be a responsible student and helped me build the right perspectives. It made me realize the focus on what really matters, which is learning. In addition to what I've learned, the current academic settings expose me to different learning management systems, which offers top quality lessons and courses. One of the LMS I've used is the ACU OER project. The system consists of many courses to which universities from the Southeast Asian countries contributed. I find it impressive because it offers top quality learning materials for underprivileged individuals who couldn't afford to enroll themselves in extracurricular classes, those who are too busy to attend regular, like to attend, to regularly attend classes, and those who just want to further their understanding of a particular course. So anyone who has a smartphone and access to the internet could benefit from courses published in the ACU OER platform. The system of o ACU OER is also easy to access and user friendly. So whenever I feel like reviewing my lessons in Quick Korean 1, I can just go through the LMS and watch the videos. Oh, sorry. So whenever I feel like reviewing the lessons in Quick Korean 1, I can just go to the LMS and watch the videos wherever I am. At first, it was difficult for me to access my lessons on Quick Korean 1 of ACOER because the audio of the videos did not function when using the smartphone. Thankfully, the admins found a way to fix it and it made the system more convenient to use. Oh. In addition to that, I get to track my learning progress since the system includes a feature called my learning status where I can review my engagement with the course and grades in the previous class. Reviewing my learning progress motivates me more because it functions as a feedback on whether I am learning and thriving on my course. Whenever the system marks the tasks I've accomplished, I feel more motivated whenever I get a high score and I tend to dig deeper about the course I'm studying. Accessing my learning status is also easy because it is accessible through the dashboard where I will be directed after learning. The system also puts automatically a check beside the video materials and tasks I've accomplished. I've been so 
that is useful, especially for students like me, who usually forget the title of the lesson I previously studied and the tasks I previously accomplished. Without the system's automatic checker, I might go through each lessons and tasks j just to find out what lessons or tasks I should take next. Another feature I've noticed in the platform is its organized and specific interaction boards. It separates the posts from announcements, community interactions, and queries. I haven't seen any posts on the announcement board, nor have I used the QA board, but I think it's a wise decision of the admins to separate important information from the community or social post. Hence, Infor important, hence important information would not be ignored. I am particularly thankful to the community board because it connected me with my classmates in Creek 3 and 1. It paved the way for new acquaintances with people from different countries. Though it's difficult to build friendship virtually, I'm still thankful that the platform allows all its users to interact with one another. I am also grateful to the admins who warmly welcomed and affirmed us as we introduced ourselves on the community board and kindly respond to our queries. Thank you for your understanding and going beyond cultural boundaries. In conclusion, academic life during the COVID-19 situation could be boring, unfair, and mentally exhausting. But I can still say that it's worth it. It shaped my character, which I think is the most important aspect of being a human. It, it pushed me to persevere, discipline myself, and be resourceful. Furthermore, for me, it's the price of getting to know and being part of a global cyber university, of which I am beyond grateful. It brought me into a new world. Thank you. So again, thank you very much to uh, Miss Esther Abigail Perez. So again, to briefly recap, um, as an actual uh, user and learner herself, um, she shared with us two major challenges in online learning, including um, the perspective absence of social interaction, which uh, in which the isol the sense of isolation ah, may actually it. affect. Yeah, the different online uh, online based programs such as the um, quick the Korean learning program currently offered by ACU project and the um, cyber University of Korea is an example initiative that is requiring requiring her as a learner uh, some sense of discipline as a social learner to currently not only engage in the teaching and learning, but also interacting with fellow um, colleague learners and, uh, and instructors. So again, thank you for the very personal insights and opinions. So um, this is so this marks the end of the presentation. So we have fallen a little behind schedule, but again. So, Thank you again to the five presenters from five different regions across the ASEAN network. So because we have had such a heap, uh, such a diverse, um, diverse spectrum of examples and exchange. So again, just to briefly go through a brief recap. So we began, uh, we began by sharing government led initiatives beginning from the Korea which uh, newly established different regional um, business education centers, providing different uh, support in terms of infrastructure, content, and uh, technical assistance in terms of personal assistance. And we also have the example from Indonesia, which also uh, provided a holistic support in terms of infrastructure, content, and um, personal support, which was also um, show, um, 
shown as another example from the Kaimuk example. And then we also, uh, after the three government national scale initiatives, we went down a little bit uh, personal, uh, sharing insights from the instructor, from uh, sharing the example of the Vietnamese uh, path, and also the uh, individual learner from the Philippine region. So again, thank you. So uh, now uh, I would like to begin the discussion session. So uh, we have a guest with us this um, afternoon from the Lao PDR. But before we invite them, again, I would like to begin the discussion uh, by requesting the, uh, the presenters to go through a brief recap of what they have shared with us. So let me begin by a common question. So um, I think this, again, uh, it may be uh, reiterating, but I think this is a topic that most of us are uh, would like to know more about is, so we have heard a lot about the lessons and the triumphs, the lessons learned from the past two years. So uh, as a professor or as an instructor or as a government uh, official, so could you again uh, briefly kindly share with us what was the most imminent challenge that you faced in your environment and, and which in which you had to suddenly uh, respond to the sudden demand for distance education. Okay, then shall I begin? Uh, yes, please, Professor okay. Park. Okay, uh, at first, let's make it clear the terminology that we are using. Blended learning is a learner's point of view. Learn online and sometimes offline. So, for example, for seven, six days a week or five days a week, four days you learn through online and one day you go to school and meet person to person. That is a blended learning. So, what video is learning, not instruction or teaching? It's student point of view. And uh, so, blended learning is like that. And there's other term in the instructor point of view is a hybrid instruction. Hybrid instruction is usually for four days just offered by online and one day they show off their face and we meet face to face. That is the hybrid instruction. So we should make it clear and talk about it. And the smart log education, what I say is even though I do face to face teaching in the classroom, uh, but we use all kind of education technology and online machines, everything. That is the smart log education, what I say. Anyhow, the challenges we can say there are two ways as in the point of student and about the professors. Student case, when they are motivated highly, it doesn't matter whether online, offline, they really do their best. And even though I don't teach, just put on their, uh, the video, they can learn by themselves. But the problem is low motivated student. In their case, even though they sit on in front of me, I mean the screen, I can see them. You know, even there's a cheating. You, you can have the background, the picture, right? So they sit on as if you take my courses and take the picture and put it as a background and they disappear and sleep. I caught catch one student who does that and I call his name, please show up your face and in the end he show up. So uh, those kind of things happen. So this online case, the most hard thing is how to control, how to motivate them, how to make the part participate in learning process. And uh, that is the, about the professor, the students side and professor side also still many professors feel uncomfortable uncomfortable about using this kind of edge technology devices and machines and they still resist so that kind of things it will take a little more time and the third one is now students and professors are adjusted to this easy convenience online teaching and learning so when schools before the career case, uh, students say, we need you us back the tuition because we don't go to school and we cannot use school facilities. So now government and school say, come back. And suddenly they say, no, no, it's okay. We'll just stay at home. So we are spoiled. And we still now, so what we have to do is we really have to check. They really learn or they just choose the convenience. So that's the challenge that we have. Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much, Dr. Park, on uh, ident pinpointing the different challenges in terms of student, in terms of learners, and in general. So I think, again, uh, as I think uh, Ms. Perez has mentioned earlier, um, the sense of um, interaction and motivation, I think, it, again, uh, uh, we have to go back to that, uh, taking that as our main key concern in order for us to uh, plan and implement a successful online learning, no, online or offline. So um, may I, so if, may I invite anyone to freely continue the discussion, please. Yes, Dr. Theodore Rong to speak. Thank you, Tori. Please read that for Professor Park uh, about the issue. And in addition, I would like to add two issues uh, that may be uh, uh, problem in, in, in Thailand also. Uh, from the student uh, perspective, uh, when we change from the, the, the physical class to the online uh, university course, uh, students go back to their home. There are some, some problems in, in the uh, difficulty to, to access the internet in some areas. So this is the, the uh, maybe the foundation of the learning with the online. So uh, not only the, the coverage of the internet, uh, we, we, we cover it all earlier, but the stable of the signal and also the equipment of the learner, they are some, some kind of different. So uh, in, in, in Thailand, the university try to uh, support and provide the device and also try to uh, find some area for the learner to, to come to learn. This is from the, the learning, learning side and from the, the teacher side, uh, we have a lot of difficulty for the course that, that is a skill-based skill -based course, not the content. So we have to practice the learner. They have to go to the laboratory they have, have to practice something to show their skill, to show their competency. But on the online mode, we cannot, we cannot do that. So this uh, come back to the profession, how can they overcome this situation? Because uh, COVID-19 did not, did not stay with that uh, short period. Now maybe uh, nearly two years. So how to overcome uh, this uh, difficulty about the skill base? So the teacher have to try to think uh, some 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 way you know, innovative way of design. They try to uh, do a demonstration. They try to uh, uh, do a new research, new re uh, redesign of the content. They they separate the intellectual skill, the way to think, the way to understand, the, the way to respond to to the the pattern of the the skill practice from the, the skill practice and then uh, we teaching via the online with the intellectual skill but we hope that in the near future we can uh, we can uh, provide some special session for the student to do the practice skill and in, in the uh, very advanced way maybe we think about the simulation simulation machine that can uh, he wants us to practice the student with the online mode also. Uh, similar to the, the, the airplane, the aircraft, the simulation, driving the air or driving the car. If we have that kind of simulation, maybe uh, they can support uh, and they create the, the problem. But uh, anyway, we still need to have time to practice the student in the, in the laboratory. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you, Dr. Therong uh, Chaisri. So again, um, so the two major challenges, again, uh, I think um, when we talk, think about the challenges, we naturally go back to the most fundamental issues. So again, uh, the first issue was on the issue of accessibility. So again, um, uh, it is very, um, if you think about it, it's a very easy issue that, you know, when you just think about accessibility, we provide more uh, devices, we provide more infrastructure, but uh, does that end there? So does this issue of accessibility end just by providing more, uh, more computer devices or more LMS platforms? So I think uh, that's just the uh, first and foremost issue. And again, and when you think about the second issue pointed out on uh, 
are there really uh, can online education really teach all the skills? So you know, uh, again, he mentioned some of the specific skills that still they believe needed to be taught in the offline laboratories. So and um, a very interesting point about this point is that um, I have also seen uh, very new examples, for example, on um, physical education or specific skills that are being currently uh, taught in the online platform. So again, uh, from another perspective, when we think about it, perhaps there are also uh, there are possible alternatives which we can you know, refer to. Uh, by using online uh, education. So thank you again for your insights. And do we have any other, I would like to invite other presenters before moving on. Uh, yes, please, Dr. Jiang. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Dennis. And uh, I would like to introduce Dr. Nguyen uh, in Hanoi University of Science and Technology to say her experience in online teaching during COVID-19. And uh, I have a, a special impression with the way she breaks the ice glass match in her online class to match her students. And please, Dr. Vien. Okay, thank you, Dr. Zhang. <laughs> and hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Huyen and I'm from Hamosan uh, Antinologies. Uh, um, I'm a teacher. I feel a lot of change in my life last year. Uh, since COVID happens, it changed the way I teach and I, it's also changed the way students in my university learn. As uh, I see the present, uh, the last uh, presentation from, from Ms. Uh, Pisa from Philippines, and I agree with all the agreement that you bring up, all the opportunities and difficulties that students face and also, I uh, agree with uh, the first presenter, Nami Park. I think the most difficult, the most difficult point in online learning is how to motivate students, how to engage students in the lecture. And for my case, for my experience, uh, since I uh, I switched from traditional teaching to online teaching, I have to, uh, to learn a lot of. Uh, I think the. Um, I learned a lot of things. I learned a lot of things from uh, how to use uh, like a teaching tool, how to uh, design a blended uh, blended lecture. And um, in uh, in last last year, last semester, I have I got two class. Uh, got two soft skill class, and in this class, I have to uh, apply a lot of method to 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 gain a retention from students, I have to like, sometimes, uh, because when I look, when I look in into, in, into class, and sometimes I feel lonely because students always uh, turn off the camera, turn off the video, and sometimes I have to ask them to uh, turn on the, the, the videos. And once they turn on the video, I feel the uh, atmosphere is glad in like much warmer. So I think, the, 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 the point is students have to, uh, to see the other face and see the uh, teacher face. So I have to like uh, to organize some um, eye break games. Maybe, maybe like 50 minutes, one, 50 minutes, one, after I teaching, like after, after teaching 50 minutes and I put a small game to, to regain the attention. And after five minute came, I continue my lecture. And after that, I have some like uh, some discussions. And so I feel my class uh, during the COVID-19 uh, with online game. Online teaching uh, with online game is much more effective for students and as well for me, for my experience. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know in the case, but in my case, I think the most important point is like we have to focus on students because you know that when, when you log in the system and you uh, see if students did it like this is if students don't open their camera, we, we feel lonely, right? 
we feel like still like cloth like empty and uh, are they with me? Sometimes I have to ask like, can you like clap your hand or can can you uh, like give me a hurt? So I know that you are with me and I know that you are uh, you still 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 there with me. You still there in class. So as of uh, at the beginning of COVID, I feel very stressed because I can see student video. I can see student face, not like traditional class. I can see their uh, emotion. If they're happy with the lecture, if they're sad, if they like feel sleepy, I know everything. But for online learning, I know nothing. I just know uh, there are some there are some participants in online class, but I'm not sure like if they are um, like maybe they are like having a uh, half dinner or they are uh, like have some meal and they are sleeping. I don't know because they didn't they don't open the camera so I don't know. Hmm. So that's why like I have to uh, <clears throat> I have to like uh, organize some game to let they open their camera and have discussion with teacher and have discussion with their classmates. So the atmosphere class is much warmer. And I think students, uh, and at the end of uh, each class, I always ask for the feedback from the students, and they always uh, give very uh, positive feedback, like uh, they love the class, they, they think the class is like kind of fun, and they love the way that we motivate others to learn. Nice. So not feel lonely. They not feel like oh, just uh, they are a teacher and teaching. They to talk, 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 talk. No, in our class we have um, we have a lot of fun. Although they are online learning, they are just hybrid learning. We have uh, we teaching like a uh, uh, psychonaut and a psychonaut, but they still feel like there are some classmates around you, and we are learning together, and we will get to together whenever if any uh, difficulty occur teacher on way there and classmate away there with them and also i um i also have a project a project about like uh, um in this project i also like um create for students but we we are like but we wait and for teamwork because I think the teamwork or listen to to students uh, not only listen to the to the teacher but teamwork talking with other classmates talking a working team like will motivate them to learn more and to uh, to uh, to get a better outcome in their learning so just some, just some of my experience i know in my university um, many teacher and culty like a difficulty during uh, teaching they don't know how to use team you they don't know how to use like 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 some example uh our mi systems some teacher they have a uh, they're not like a technology native, so it's kind of difficult for them. So I think uh, for researchers and educational, we should like we on, we also have to support for our teacher to learn more. The way to adapt uh, during the COVID nineteen. I think the. I think that is the, the important uh, the critical point during uh, nineteen uh, during COVID nineteen. Uh, during COVID, yeah, COVID nineteen. <clears throat> um, just that, just my uh, experience uh, last year. I hope it have for anyone who are looking for a way to motivate their student. Just, Think about online game. Think about teamwork, and and focus on the students that will like uh, uh, make the lessons, make the class more fun and more attractive. 
Thank you very much. If uh, any any comments, any question, we can just feel free to uh, yes. thank you. Okay, uh, so thank you again, Dr. Huyen. So if um, from the way I understood your um, insights, I think one of the biggest challenges that instructors would be, instructors are encountering is that all these pressures, you know, on requiring instructors to be familiar with the LMS, with the different platforms, and being able to, you know, it draw the attention of their students, and but not being able to know the status of their students because they can't see them, you know, in the actual uh, offline environment. So I think uh, the um, fundamental issue, one of the fundamental issue, uh, according to what you've commented, is that these uh, so much different pressures are requiring instructors to become a you know a solo performer you know being able to attract the attention the you know, the participation of learners and having to be technologically savvy at the same time so i think that is why we need different uh, perspective uh, different uh, supports and different perspective not just you know in instructors being able in not just uh, assisting instructors to use different platforms but also being able to help their interactions with students so um that was very insightful thank you and i think um dr junaidi was raising his hand earlier yes yes thank you thank you for the chance i would like to uh, respond for the three uh, big issues that uh, you are mentioning about the accessibility and uh, infrastructure and also learning outcome the accessibility here uh, uh, this is the best practice in indonesia that uh, due to the geographical uh, area in indonesia some of the remote uh, do not have access from the wi-fi internet so to solve the problem at the moment uh, from the the short term uh, uh, solution is uh, give the about five thousand tablet uh, to a student and the tablet is contained the module module for for uh, studying yeah, for learning so uh, the student uh, by uh, offline they still can uh, uh, learning uh, from the material that we uh, install uh, in the tablet this is the first uh, one the second one uh, about the uh, learning outcome is not the study program can uh, fuel uh, daring at the moment so we uh, use the hybrid learning so that means uh, for the practical matter uh, we still allow with the uh, head protocol they still can uh, doing the practical uh, matter so this is we combine between the hybrid learning and also uh, some uh, uh, devices that are for uh, the students so thank you this is uh, our policy at the ministry thank you so much so thank you again dr Junaidi. so again uh, we do uh, need okay so when i think again um in specific in certain circumstances like the coronavirus um top-down policy supports can sometimes be proved to be effective and um, and in certain in certain geographical uh environments such as indonesia um so i think we have uh, a um, we have our one of our pa partners from the lao pdr who would also like to share their insights. Do we have them connected? Uh, do we have Dr. Saiko Sainasin from Lao PDR? Okay, so um, I think um, he is currently just um, out of his place. But uh, so while we wait for him, uh, I have a, so again, thank you for the opening uh, discussion. So while we wait for our uh, partner from Laos, um, let me share with you a, num a couple of questions that we have collected from um, during the presentations and pre previous to the presentation. Uh, I would like to share with our uh, first question with Professor Park, and I think uh, our audience has 
found it very, uh, has found your, oh, sorry, um, I am very sorry to uh, go back and forth, but uh, I think we can uh, go back to our partner from Lao PDR to share their comments first. Yeah, uh, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Are you ready? Hello? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, first of all, I would like to express my sense of for allowing me to join in this uh, conference. I uh, very appreciate that I can share and I can learn from the, our friend from several country. Uh, about the, uh, how to overcome the uh, COVID situation uh, in the past uh, time. Uh, I do know that uh, all the uh, country in the world does affect, affect from the COVID-19 and also Lao, Lao too. Um, actually, uh, during the COVID-19, there's most of our institution and school has slope to learning by face to face, and we continue to learn from uh, distance learning or by uh, e learning or uh, by, by using on application that available. But you know that uh, particularly they have very different difficulties with the uh, learning from the distance because um, we have no experience about that. And when we participate to the uh, cyber university network for quite a long time, but uh, if not all universities in Lao involved to this project, just only the national universities of Lao who uh, have quite have good experience on the uh, e-learning. So most of our, our students and our teachers have faced difficulties. Uh, first thing that uh, the teacher lack, lack, lack of experience how to prepare the course online and how to teach online. And the second thing, the student also uh, not family, obviously, because they, 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 they use to, 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 to learn from face to face. Now they have to learn by themselves by using the uh, mobile phone or cell or any in the available. And the, 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 the second thing that we have difficulty to internet access for those who are living in the remote area in the countryside, uh, the, the, the internet access is very low. And in some cases, uh, the, they have to pay for internet, they quite expensive. It's different with the other country. So that, uh, However, the government had made all the efforts to overcome this uh, difficulty time and we are look forward in the future. So the government tried to promote uh, and call us all the, 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 the stakeholder to, to help our students, our teacher by providing the internet access even for uh, those who can provide the device for a, a student. So this, uh, as it's very, very difficult, uh, and we are only hope that when we are uh, participate to this uh, project, uh, Cyber University, we can, can learn the experience from our friends from Korea, Thailand, Vietnam, another country, that uh, how to together to over overcome the COVID-19. So uh, uh, thank you very much that uh, I learned a lot today. I hear a lot and learn a lot from your presentation. Thank you very much. Um, so thank you again from the Laos Ministry of Education and Sports. So uh, going back to the points uh, mentioned and being iterated. So um, again, at the end of the day, I think um, it as uh, one of the um, participants uh, currently uh, implementing the ASEAN Cyber University project, it would be our um, ultimate wish uh, for the ACU OER platform to be, uh, to be able to serve the role um, as an alternative to, the, uh, to our ASEAN network 
who are still facing the issues of accessibility, lack of expertise, and lack of content. So uh, just to add a brief um, information, so this morning we had uh, a signing of partnership with a number of ASEAN countries which would um, decide that the ACU project would be implemented based on an online platform, the ACU OER platform. So in that term, we hope that this platform could be continuously referred to for different partner countries uh, as one of the uh, solutions that could perhaps help uh, our partner countries um, address the issues, again, of accessibility, um, lack of expertise on um, utilizing different contents, and again, the lack of content. So thank you again to all our participants. And um, we do have questions. So uh, because we are running out of time, let me just ask a number of uh, just a few questions. So again, um, going back to, uh, let me first go to Dr. Park. So again, the concept of smart log was very interesting for our audience. And uh, would, let me read out the question. So thank you again for the presentation. So regarding this smart log uh, mo um, model that you have shared with us, uh, could you also kindly share with us one of your most successful smart log concepts, uh, smart log experiences? What kinds of online and offline activities did you integrate and uh, what was some of the most uh, successful outcomes from the activities? And while you think about uh, the, while you organize your answers, let me also give out a question to Ms. Um, Esther Perez. Uh, as, uh, as a continuous, continuous online learner actively engaging in online activity, uh, what would you say, uh, what would you select as the most important teacher for you, uh, that would be necessary for you to uh, to assist you uh, to assist your successful online learning. So again, what do you think is the most important feature in an online learning environment that would assist your successful online activities? So, uh, if we could start with mm. Dr. Park. Okay. Oh, thank you for your interest in small log model. Uh, one of the thing that I want to focus on was when you do the small of learning like the model small of teaching and education you don't have to teach by yourself alone you can use many resources person at the same time when i teach future teachers uh, i need the teachers who teach now and then through zoom i call them and make set up the time i had and so if i call then they come in and they tell students what should be done when they are student and what will they do when they are student then my student can ask them questions and i teach in the uh, teacher t uh, education program and at the same time sometimes the medical school my friend i call and say let's have joint class then medical school comes in my student comes in then they talk each other. So anyhow, medical school or teacher school of education, we handle person, human beings. So what's the difference? What are they doing? And those kind of things. And while I'm teaching, sometimes I turn on the MOOC program, even Harvard, wherever, if there is a wonderful lecture, then I just show my student for five minutes. And then it means I can teach with Harvard colleagues, right? So when you use this kind of MOOC program, then the, I mean the uh, smart log education model uh, paradigm, then really you can do many things. And at the same time, I can use others lecture and I can invite them or I can join together. Even when I teach, I may can teach with Philippine students. I call them together and we can talk each other. So this smart log paradigm is, means even though you teach offline with your student at the same time you can use a lot of online like edge tech technologies and all that kind of ai programs so it will put you like the iron man when you put the iron man suit you can be superman right so when we have this kind of all kind of ai programs and uh, edge technologies then uh, usual human being teacher can be a superman style iron man style teachers Thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, Ms. Perez. 
Uh, sorry, your audio is a little bit unclear. Could you kindly repeat? Is it okay now? Oh, yes, no problem now. I think one of the most important aspects of the online learner is the constant and um, interactive. Um, as a student, I can like I can't advance or further my knowledge without this without my teacher's validation. So if I can't receive validation or feedbacks from my instructors, um, what I do is my knowledge is just like stagnant it, it doesn't like advance or something and um from what i've experienced um the transition from the transition of mode of education from face-to-face -face classes to online learning it, it limits the feedback uh that the students receive from their instruction uh, instructors so i think um, it's one of the most important aspects in online learning. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Ms. Harris. So uh, if, uh, if I were to integrate the two speakers' answers, I think um, the, main, the core point would be on the integration part, integrating, uh, as Dr. Park mentioned, different disciplines from medicine to education and from, according to Ms. Pear's answer, integrating different feedbacks from different, uh, perhaps uh, not only the learner, perhaps fellow colleagues or uh, any different, any kind of resources on the online um, environment. So thank you. And um, one question, okay, so let me move on. Let me quickly move on. So um, a question to Dr. Jiang first. So, you mentioned earlier that you integrated the ACU OER platform with MS Teams. Is there a specific reason you chose MS Teams in among the different platforms? And what do you think was the most successful outcome in using the specific tool? And um, due to time constraints, uh, I would like to share one final question. This is an open question. I invite, um, any um, speaker to share their insights. So the question is from, okay, let me read the question. I just have one question. Can you tell me the degree of adaptation to remote teaching and learning in the lower and upper grades? And I appreciate if anyone could share their experiences I am curious about young generations adoption in Asia. And um, I think this is a rather wide question. So, um, but uh, considering that our topic is more focused on higher education, if you could also expand your um, answer to not only higher education, but also the entire education in general, that would also be wonderful, but if not, you could also just uh, focus on the higher education part. So please, uh, uh, may I start with Dr. Jian? Thank you very much uh, for the question. Uh, I think uh, the most difficult in online learning COVID-19 is motivating students uh, in online class. Uh, then uh, you can see the experience from Dr. Park, Dr. Wien, and Dr. Machai about uh, how to motivate the student. Um, and I think uh, if we have a limitation to control student in synchronous online class, we should uh, prepare content in detail in an online course in a learning management system, uh, such as uh, ICN Cyber University Open Educational Resource, LMS. So uh, it's the way we must the pilot class on ICU pilot class with the Microsoft Teams. And you can see Microsoft, we can use Microsoft Teams to make an uh, asynchronous online class uh, to apply to it student directly, uh, but uh, we have a limitation to control student in this class. 
because students can uh, close the uh, video and uh, have uh, another action when uh, we teach them. So uh, we should prepare the learning content uh, in an online class uh, from in a learning management system how they can study uh, when they have the time and we have uh, an event as now uh, which test uh, in this uh, LMS for students to do uh, to, con to control the performance learning, learning process and so uh, we can a blended class uh, for online learning in COVID-19 is the best um, for God with the difficulty in COVID-19. Yeah. That's all my experience. Thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. let me add one more thing. Oh, yes, please. Uh, yes, yes. Uh, I made a term that weaknesses of online learning means who cannot learn online by themselves. It's a students from vulnerable classes and remote areas and underachieving students and low motivation students and K to three level students, kindergarten to third. This kind of students case, uh, even though it's uh, online real time teaching and what, but they don't have motivation. They, they cannot understand what teachers do. So actually this kind of student need adult assistance beside them. So adult assistant, if there is no others who can help them, actually even though they sit down, they cannot learn at all. So Korea case, when they shut down and try to open schools, uh, at first they said grade 12, they will open first. So I told them, no, it's not a good idea. We have to open K to three students first because kindergarten, they cannot study, cannot do things home alone and first lab, first graders also. So there is this kind of uh, weaknesses of online learning. So we should focus on that. And this kind of student case really needs somebody to assist them. So what I suggest is uh, make the village level, like around five students gather together, there one or who help them, then maybe they can learn better, even though school shut down. So need that kind of systems. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I would again like to invite if anybody would like to answer the open question that I shared earlier. Uh, can you tell me the degree of adaptation to remote teaching and learning in the lower and upper grades? So what do you mean by adaptation? I think um, from the way I understood the question, I think if you could, tell, if anybody in our presenter and panelists could share with us um, how, um, to what level are the students um, use, utilizing and using um, online teaching and online teaching in their um, classes? Oh, so actually uh, there is a difference, even though, uh, elementary school students who are the online, the digital learners, if they are trained to learn through online and they are used to, they can do it. So we just think about teacher training, but we also should think about student training for digital learners. We think students know about digital device very well, so they can learn from digital through the online. But actually, I found out it's not true. They are digital consumers. They know how to play game, how to enjoy, how to watch video, but they don't know how to adjust and sit on and learn through the online program. So uh, we have to train them first, but we didn't think about training students. So maybe that's the most important thing we have to think about. Um, okay, thank you, Doctor. Thank you again, Dr. Park. So uh, I think one of the most um, essential points that we have to remember again is that you know our um, the learners these days uh, the young the um, primary to higher education learners they are very uh, open to digital technologies and as they uh, they have been uh, with the digital technologies practically throughout their lives but that does not mean that they will also effectively integrate that in their learning so again we need to make a difference between digital consumer and learner and this um, 
learning should be done uh, together between the instructor and student. So um, I am sorry for uh, we have for the time constraints. Uh, I would like to continue um, asking uh, to continue discussing, but due to our time constraints, um, it is. I am very sorry to uh, call it uh, the end of today's conference. Uh, but again, um, this, so um, just to conclude, so 2021 has been a very um, transitioning year for the ASEAN Cyber University project. So uh, starting next, uh, st starting 2022, our project will expand online. So we hope that uh, including the professional prof uh, professors and the experts who have joined us this afternoon. Uh, we hope that this will be a starting uh, point for expanding different uh, interactions of uh, contents and insights for the successful implementation of the ASEAN Cyber University project. So with that, uh, let me call it the end of this uh, webinar international conference so thank you to everyone to thank you to each and everyone who have been with us this afternoon so enjoy the rest of your afternoon thank you very much thank you thank bye bye you. yeah nice hope to see you again bye. yeah bye 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 thank you thank you very much